Hi everyone and welcome back to day 24 of Christmas in September at Stamp with Anna. Today is the last day that we'll be using the cookie cutter Christmas um, stamp set. And this is a cute little spinner card um, that we're going to make. A cute little Eskimo. Um, I love these kind of window cards. They're so cute. And then to, to be able to do this is just, it, it just adds such a nice touch to it. So um, what we're using, again, is the cookie cutter Christmas stamp set. We're using this little um, Eskimo. And it comes with a stamp set called the cookie cutter stamp set. Um, I mean, punch, excuse me, the cookie cutter punch. And... Um, it will cut out the Eskimo, the gingerbread man, the Santa, the teddy bear. And if you tip this reindeer upside down, you'll see that it'll cut him out as well. Then there are some ears for the teddy bear, a couple bow ties, which the punch will also punch out. Then um, a little face that you can attach on the teddy bear. And um, the punch also has little... Um, tiny circles and larger circles with a heart and those you can just um, do so much with those I think they're adorable so anyway let's get started with our um, spinner window card what we need for paper is our card base is um, marina mist it's four and a half excuse me four and a quarter by eleven scored at five and a half then we have a matting layer in the middle, which is Whisper White, and that is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. Then I have a piece of designer series paper, and this is from an old Christmas set called Winter Frost Specialty Pack. Um, and if you don't have this one, you certainly can use any kind of um, winter paper. You just adjust um, adjust your colors. I picked this one because it had snowflakes on it and little Eskimos come from where there is lots of snow. And this is cut at four by five and a quarter. Then we need uh, a scrap of white and marina mist. We are using the layering circles frameless. We're using the large, I don't think it's the largest circle, but um, the maybe the second largest circle and a scallop that nests with that so that we can make this um, frame. Then I'm also using the watercolor pencils, Wimp of Stella, a blender pen, and to attach my Eskimo to this uh, hole here, I've used some fishing line. My husband fishes, so um, he, I was able to get that from him. If you don't have fishing line, you can use a thin strip of window sheet. You can use um, dental floss. You can use anything. You, know, you could even use um, baker's twine if you didn't mind the look of um, the baker's twine. So um, I think that's all we need. So oh, we also need um, repositionable tape because that's very important. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to layer all three of our pieces together. And we're going to use the repositionable tape for that. And that is very, very important that you do have that. Otherwise, when you go take these layers apart, when you put the card together, um, you are going to rip your paper, tear your paper. Okay. You don't need a whole lot, just to, um, enough to keep your card, your papers together while you do your die cutting. So, what we're going to do now is open this up and we're going to take our circle framelit. I'm going to position it where I want it in, on the card and I'm going to go run that through my Big Shot. I'll be right back. Okay, and this is um, what we have. We have our circle cut out. Now save this round piece because we're going to punch and stamp one of our um, Eskimo on that. So now to make the um, frame that goes over this, we're going to take 
We're going to do this both with Whisper White and Marina Mist. And I'll show you why in a second. We're going to make this punch out, excuse me, die cut that circle. And then die cut this one around it. And that will make a blue um, frame. The reason why we're doing it in Whisper White as well is so that when you open it on the inside, you have clean edges. You don't want to have messy raw looking edges there. And that's the same reason why I've stamped two Eskimos. So one can go in the front and when you open it up, you're not looking at a plain white piece of paper. I decided that I wanted the Eskimo to appear on both sides. So I'm going to go do that with my Whisper White and my Marina Mist and then I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with my two frames. And again, when I punched out my circle, I'm going to save that because I'm, that's where I'm going to stamp my um, Eskimo on. Okay, so now we can start to put, um, well actually first we're going to stamp and then we can put together. So the way we stamped, I put in my two circles here and I'm using Memento ink so that the colors won't run when I uh, use my blender pen. This one. And there's two. Now with my um, watercolor pencils, I'm going to use the uh, base, oh, what's that, the basic black. I'm going to use the Pacific Point and the, uh, I think it was, yes, this pumpkin pie. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the basic black for the shoes or the boots. And I'm just making little circles to color it all in. And then I'm going to use the Pacific Point and I'm going to do everything but the fur. And you can certainly use whatever colors you want. Um, I just didn't want to use... Um, a lot of different colors. I didn't, I don't know, I'm not a big colorer, so this was uh, easy for me to just pick three colors. And then I'm going to do her face lightly in the pumpkin pie. I'm going to color this one and then I'll be right back. Okay, now that um, my little girl is colored, I'm going to use my blender pen and I'm going to blend the colors. First, I always want to clean my pen off, make sure that I don't have any of the last color I used on there. So I'm just going to pull these colors in on her face. I'm going to clean it off, and then I'm going to come in and do her mittens and her jacket. And the blender pen works great. It um, smooths out all of the um, pencil marks. So it gives it nice shading. Okay, and I'm going to clean all the blue off, and I'm going to come in and do the boots. And there we go. I'm just going to come in and fix that blue on this, this one right here. Now all the places where there is fur, I'm going to come in with my Wink Stella and lay that on. And I want it to um, be, I don't want to say thick, but I want it to be noticeable because 
I want her fur to be shiny and shimmery. So once this dries, <coughs> excuse me, or after it's set for a while, I will go back and just put another layer or two on top of it. Okay, so, oh, forgot this. Okay, so she's all done. Now we have to uh, punch her out. I'm going to bring it in the punch. And she does fit nicely. This piece of paper is a little small, but that's all right. That's how we save paper. Make the most of our paper. Okay, there's one. And there's two. All right, we're all done with that. So now we're going to start to assemble our card. Now remember, we had these attached with um, repositionable tape. So we're gently going to peel them apart, all three pieces. Now we're going to attach the um, whatever you're going to use as your string. And in my case, I'm going to use the fishing line. So I want something sturdy, something strong. So I'm going to use some fast fuse. I'm going to put some on the top and on the bottom. And then I'm also going to use a glue dot. And what I'm going to do is, the hardest part I found is making sure that this is in the middle. So I'm going to give myself a lot of room, a lot of extra, so that I have some to play with. And then I'm going to take this glue dot and just put that right on top of it so that I have a little extra security. Then I'm going to run this one up, push that down nice and tight, and then I'm going to take my glue dot and push that down. And there we go. And I'm going to come in with my scissors. And I'm going to trim those long pieces because obviously we don't want them sticking out. Okay. So now we can attach our front piece with permanent adhesive. So I'm going to use, let me just move this out of the way. I'm going to use my snail. And... In addition to putting the snail on all four sides, I do want to run some around my circle. Now what I found is, since these were all die cut together, the circles line up. So what I found is easiest is to layer using the circles as a guide rather than um, the corners. Of course, that being said, want to come back in and pull this a little taut. Okay, so I'm going to bring this in, line up my circles, and if they're lined up right, the tops should be lined up right as well. There we go. Okay. Now before I attach this to my card base, I want to um, attach my ribbon. And I'm using, um, this is, what do they call this? Scallop dots. And I'm going to cut a piece that is a little lar longer than the width of my card and then a shorter one. And I'm going to make, I always call it my fake bow. I want to put my long piece down horizontally, excuse me, vertically, with the, um, polka dots, the printed side up facing down, and then I'm going to put my short piece along 
horizontally also with my polka dots facing down. So now I'm going to hold this and I'm going to just tie a knot. And because my ribbon is patterned, when I'm pulling it together, I do need to maneuver it a little bit so that the pattern is on the outside. Just play with it a little bit. You'll see that it falls together really quickly and easily. Okay, there we go. Perfect. And now I'm going to put a little bit of snail on the back of my card. Because I know that that will keep my bow down nicely. I'm going to wrap that around. Okay, and now I'm going to attach this to my card front. And again, the same as when I layered the um, designer series paper to the white layer, I'm going to use my circle as a guide. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm going to trim my ribbon. And we need to attach our little Eskimo. So what we're going to do is <clears throat> take some um, snail. I'm going to make sure you get some right down the middle because that's what's going to attach the um, punched out shape to the, um, in my case, fishing line. So I'm going to center her up. Good press then flip it over and I'm going to put more although there's adhesive already on there I'm going to put more because I really want to make sure she stays together and then this lines up perfectly with the other one okay and there she is now what we're going to do is take our um, marina mist frame and with a glue pen I'm just going to, oh, I want the chisel tip one. I'm just going to put a little bit of um, glue all around the edges and attach that right there. I'm going to hold that down so I get a good stick. And then I'm going to do the same with my white. to put my silicone mat down and I'm going to do the same on the inside and then that just gives it a nice finished touch it's the little details that make your card stand out okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Winka Stella and I'm just going to lightly go over my frame just to give it some more sparkle, because you can never have enough sparkle. Okay, now we have another piece of Whisper White that is cut at four by five and a quarter. And I'm going to put that on the inside of the card because I want, um, I want white behind the Eskimo. And that's also where I'm gonna put my greeting. When I do stamp my greeting, I do have to be uh, aware of where I'm writing. And inside 
Now the last thing we're going to do is just add uh, some rhinestone. Here they are. Here are some rhinestones, and I just decided to put them in the center of wherever the rainbows were on this paper. This is my pokey tool. I'm use that instead of my scissors. So I'm going to put one there and one there, one here. put as many as you want or as few as you want I like bling so I'm putting in lots another one there and one more right there and there we have it isn't she cute and I think the uh, addition of the wink of Stella on the frame and on the fur of her little winter jacket is adds such a nice touch I know you can't really see it, but I hope you can see a little bit of the um, the glimmer. So that's the last project using the Cookie Cutter Christmas. And I hope you'll come back tomorrow for day 25 where we'll be starting a series with another set. We're almost done. Six more days, two more stamp sets. So I hope you'll be back to join me. Um, if you have any questions about this project, please uh, contact me through my blog, www.stampwithanna.blogspot.com. Thanks so much, and I'll see you back here tomorrow.